and foremost, I uh, want to give all honor and glory to God because he continues to do just a mighty work in our hearts and in our lives and in our walk as Christian believers. Who, who's ready this morning? Anybody ready this morning? Amen. Amen. Ready to receive? Amen. Well, let us pray. Let's pray and let's just thank God. Uh, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, a name above all names to which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And Father, this morning, we want to thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for allowing us to, to speak the words uh, of wisdom. We ask, Father, that you get the glory out of every word that is spoken out of my mouth this morning. Let every word be of you, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit guide us. Let your Holy Spirit be the first and last in everything that is said this morning. We pray, Father, that um, all the honor and all the glory goes to you as the Lord, as the Savior, as the rock, as the fortress, the deliverer, the buckler, the high tower. Um, you are just everything in our lives. And we thank you in this morning uh, for the service you have put together. We give you all the honor and all the glory in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Give God a round of applause this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 If you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. Well, good morning, family. Good morning. Uh, I want to just go straight into what we're doing this morning and just give you everything that you need. Can I give you, can I equip you with all that you need to be successful in the walk that you have in the Lord. Is that, that's my job. My job is to equip you. And so the name of the service this morning is uh, don't get too religious on me. Mm. Don't get too, I heard some mm's on that. Don't get too religious on me. And the main scriptures that, that we will refer to are, and I want, to, I want you to make sure you hear this whole uh, entire service that we have for you this morning. Uh, the, the scriptures that we are going to refer to are Mark, uh, the second chapter, verses 22 or 23 to, through 27, Deuteronomy 23, uh, 25, uh, 1 Samuel 2, or no, 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and one more, Romans 8, 28 through 30. Amen. So let me give you those again, Mark, 20, uh, Mark 2, 23 to 27, Deuteronomy 23, uh, verse 25, 1 Samuel 21, um, 1 through 6, Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and Romans 8, 28 through 30. And there's a reason for all those scriptures that we're giving. Uh, last week we discussed, last week we discussed the, uh, the facts that Jesus was deliberately associating with people who were rejected, uh, people who were outcasts, people who were uh, doing, uh, going in the wrong direction. And he was doing that for the simple fact that uh, the religious folks, the Pharisees, never believed that they had a need for repentance. Um, and, and they didn't have a need. They didn't feel they had a need for a, a savior of their sin. Uh, because they felt that their works saved them uh, from, uh, their, from their sins. Their works, everything that they did was getting them closer to God. Uh, it was saving them from God's wrath. But how many people know that that's not true? How many people know that uh, we are all in need of a savior? And so Jesus dealt with the people who were, how would you say it, uh, not so religious. Uh, he dealt with the people who were not so self-righteous. Uh, he hung out with the with the not not uh, the, the 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 people who were non-pharisaical, who were non-Pharisees, who were non-religious. He hung out with everybody. He hung out with people like you and me. And so Jesus dealt with those people and uh, people who realized that they were sick and realized that there was a need to confess their sins. There was a need for healing, and that healing only came uh, before God through Jesus Christ. Amen? And so people, uh, people flock to Jesus. And, and how many of you in here 
uh, fall within that category, that category of you have sinned, you have fallen short, you have made mistakes. And without Jesus, we would have no, no salvation. And so we all understand that. And so um, we are still evaluating that this section because we have to complete that uh, this section in Mark uh, so that we can continue to establish our point. And our point is simple. Our point is that God is interested in your relationship, not your religious ways. He's interested in your relationship, not your religious ways. Let's say that real loud. Say, God is interested in your relationship. Amen, amen, amen. And so God chose to uh, deliver his laws to Moses uh, of the Bible, which uh, were obeyed by uh, Abraham um, of the Bible, and henceforth Israel came forth because of that. And so um, the religious folks of that time would always use the laws, not as a point in the right direction, but more of a way to badger people of their wrongs, to tell people not what they're doing right, but tell people what they're doing wrong. And so that the, the, they would take them in the wrong direction. So they felt con confined, they felt held down. They felt you know, like everybody else was self-righteous but they could do that, but they always did things wrong. Anybody in here ever felt that you do things wrong and that no, you know, that people, have you ever felt that you have been judged by folks? Have you ever felt that the world judges you according and, and makes you seem like you're something that you're not? Well, that's what was happening with them. And Jesus establishes the point of order uh, of where the laws fall in comparison to his, uh, your immediate needs. And I want you to understand this today because God's fourth commandment says this in Exodus, in Exodus 20 to be exact, it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So first, let me explain to you what the Sabbath day is. The Sabbath day was the seventh day of the Jewish week observed for, um, from Friday evening to Saturday evening as a day of rest and worship by the Jews. So it is an important Jewish day. It's an important day uh, to, to focus on, but to what extent is the question that we ask this morning? So let's read in Mark chapter two, verses 23 and 24. It says this, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples walked along. They be, uh, as, uh, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisee said to him, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? So the Pharisees are saying that what Jesus and his disciples were doing, meaning picking up the grain, was unlawful. And so the question you have to ask is, can you prove that? Is it somewhere in this scripture, in the laws that say that it is unlawful? And so um, let's look at the New Testament laws and let's see if that's unlawful. In the scripture you want to write down is Deuteronomy 23, 25. That's where it says that. It says, if you enter your neighbor's grain field, you may pick kernels with your hands, but you must not put a sickle to their uh to their standing grain. So what's that mean? It means uh, that you can actually pick grain, but you cannot cut it down. You can't cut it down with a sickle. So really, according to the Mosaic laws, what they were doing was not a problem. There was no problem with that. It, it was not unlawful. However, because it was the Sabbath day, a day to keep holy, they considered it reaping, which was considered working, which was uh, their justification for it being unlawful. So they're saying it was unlawful just because they say that because they were picking up grains, it's considered working and it's considered unlawful. And, and so um, the other question is, what does God have to say about this? Because uh, we're using his laws and you can't use his laws to make it what you want. You have to use his laws according to what he wanted it to be. And so, it's, and so isn't that, isn't that uh, crazy how some people sometimes use the scripture against you, but they use it out of context? 
And so we want to get this in context. We want to understand what God is saying about this. And so Mark 2, let's go to verse 25 and 26, and let's read this. Jesus, okay, so he answered, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread which is lawful only for the priest to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. So Jesus is referring, uh, that scripture is 1 Samuel 1, uh, 21, 1 through 6. He's referring to that where their misunderstanding of God's intention of the law warped their establishing the truth behind uh, what was going on there. David... <laughs> You know, and, I, and I, I'm sure some of y'all will be able to understand this. And I, I probably want to uh, uh, use somebody as an example in, in just a minute here. But David wasn't interested in the high priest's religious ways. How many people know about David? How many people read about how, how, how David was? David wasn't the type. David was the sheep herder. He was the worker. He wasn't interested in their religious ways at that moment, nor was he trying to violate God's laws. He was a man after God's own heart. So he was not trying to violate God's laws. His men were hungry. He wanted them fed. His men were hungry. He entered the tabernacle and he requested something for them to eat. His men were hungry. He wasn't interested in your religious things and saying, well, we got bread, but, but the bread is this way. He's like, you got bread? Okay, feed us. His, his men were hungry. And so all the, the tabernacle uh, had to eat was what they call consecrated bread, the, uh, which was considered to be sacred. That's sacred bread. And so it's sacred bread. Everybody say, ooh. That's sacred bread. Look, if you're starving and somebody has some sacred bread and you got some jelly, just want to say. And so all the, all the tabernacle had to eat was the consecrated bread, and, and, and it was supposed to be sacred, and uh, it's supposed to be restricted. It was supposed to be only for the priest, according to their legislation. But David was a mighty warrior. David fought. David was a man of God. And, 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 and although it was for, uh, you know, these legalistic people, the religious folks, the, the priests only, his men were still hungry. So guess what they ate? The consecrated bread. It wasn't about religion. It wasn't about doing God wrong or anything. You guessed it. He, they ate the consecrated bread. And the, the question is, was God moved by David's actions? No. God wasn't mad at David for, for filling his belly when he was hungry. Why not? Because, because David was in the right place. David was getting food for his men. And, and when you realize that, you realize that because David was, was right in getting, uh, getting his men fed, taking care of his men's needs, it wasn't based on this religious way or saying this is consecrated bread or saying you can't eat this because it's special. They were hungry and the priest had the food. It's really simple. So it's like, you know, let me use my brother Theo here. It's like my, my brother Theo, we, we've had calls back and forth saying, hey, man, I need you. Hey, man, I need you. Hey, man, I need you. Hey, Because we're brothers in Christ. All of us have, in here have done that at one time or another. So it's like my brother Theo calling me uh, on Sunday and saying, hey, man, um, my vehicle broke down. It's on the highway. Can you come and help me? And me saying, well, sorry, brother. It's Sunday. I can't help you right now, but you just hold on and I'll be there first thing Monday morning when it, when the clock strikes 12, I'll come out and help you. You know, Theo would be like, man, I'm broken down now. Did I tell you I was on the highway? Did I tell you that there are cars zooming past me? Did I tell you that my vehicle, I'm not looking for your religious ways. I'm just looking for you to trust that I need your help and provide a need for me. 
And so the Pharisees and their laws and all of, or all of them burdensome ways that they had and all those added requirements, it blinded them from the Lord's original intentions. That's where we want to get today. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, don't get too religious on me. Now watch what Jesus says next. And this is, this is uh, uh, an important part. He says in verse 27 and 28, he says, it says, then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for men and not man made for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. <laughs> Look, 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 let me say this again. He said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man made for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. <laughs> say, get him, Jesus. <laughs> Understanding these two verses will help you, help all of us so much in our salvation walk. So let's break this down in what it says. It says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man, made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was given by the Lord. Look, some of us have had this mixed up for, for, for many, many years, so I need you to hear what God is saying clearly. The Sabbath was given by the Lord as a day of physical and mental restoration, intended as a benefit for who? God's people. Let me repeat that. The Sabbath was given by the Lord as a day of physical and mental restoration intended for benefit for who? You, not God. He doesn't need to rest. You need to rest. And so God's day of rest was not for God because he does not tire. He does not lose energy. He does not say, whoa, let me rest, I'm tired. No, that's not God we serve. The God we serve has unlimited availability to energy because he is energy. And so he doesn't need mental restoration. Who does? We do. It's intended for us. It's our benefit. It's our restoration. It's our peace. What does the scripture say? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Why? Because you need rest. Because you need restoration. Because you need mental uh, understanding and, and just to dwell in the house. Of, it's you who need him, not him who needs us. It was not a day for religious people to badger people um, about the law that they broke. And Jesus was making this clear. When God gave that commandment, remember the Sabbath day it was and keep it holy, he's telling you to rest from everything else. Why? Because you need rest. How many people can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week? And so, how does that work for us? Because that's our message today. How does that make us stronger? How does that make us more accurate on what we do? How do we get this right as Christian believers? The Sabbath wasn't the problem the Pharisees were. They got too religious instead of laying down the true facts about God. The Lord doesn't need to rest. Does everybody understand that? He gave us a day of rest so that we can rest, so that we can recoup, so that we can. Now, here's the problem. Do we take advantage of what he's given us? <laughs> so I can't go to work today. I got to, uh, I can't, I mean, I can't, I can't go to church today. I got to work. He gave us a day of rest as a commandment. He needs you to rest. He needs you to settle down so you can be the best you can be as a man or a woman of God can be. You want to be the best you can be? Do what God says versus what you say. I got to make that extra money. I've got to do it. No, he says, 
Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, not for religious reasons, but for relationship reasons. It makes you think more. It makes you, the, how many people have went on a vacation before to work or just took a day or took a few hours? I said, oh my gosh, this feels good. Anybody ever said that? That mental restoration. How many people have come to church and said that? Say, I feel so refreshed. Have you ever done that before? Why? Because God refreshes you. It's not based on you. It's based on God. God does these things not for his glory. His glory is already, already there. He does it for his glory to be displayed in you. And so what does that mean, Pastor? Romans 8, 28 says this. It says, and we know all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You read that again. And we know all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If you were called by God, how many people believe that you were called by God, that God has a purpose for your life? Amen. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe that. And so if you were called by God, his laws work for your benefits, for your good. Sometimes we look at it, we say those laws were strenuous. Yes, when the Pharisees put their own twist on the laws. But the reality is the laws are for God's glory in you. You get benefits when you understand remembering the Sabbath day the right way. That means that you remember the Sabbath day by doing what? Keeping it holy. By what? Resting. Look. You don't have to listen to God. None of us do. You don't have to follow God's way. You have free will. How many people know that? We have free will. But might I say that listening to God does give you peace. Listening to God gives you peace. Why? Because he is peace. You can't, anybody ever said, well, I want to get peace. Well, no, he is peace. You can't get it at the store. You can't buy a cup of peace. You can only get it from the one who is peace, which is God. And he says, when you rest, I give you peace. Now, now taking off Sunday is not required, family. Taking off Sunday is not required. It's not required for me neither. It's not required for any of you. It's not required as a deal breaker for salvation. It's not. You can choose to work every Sunday or not go to church or go, or go to church for the rest of your life. You can choose that. But taking off Sunday and going to renew your mind at church service is what? Relaxing. How many people feel relaxed right now? Everybody say. Mm. This relaxing is not for God, but for those are called according to his purpose. Raise your hand. The relaxing is for you. Raise your hand. The Sabbath is for you. Raise your hand. Know that God has a purpose and his purpose was not based on him. It was based on you. He loves you that much. He was, I can't go to church today. Well, no, church is your salvation walk. God gives you peace in church. I just, Pastor, I just need to be, get some peace. Well, go to church. Not for me, but for the relaxing that God gives you. You don't have to listen to the Lord. You don't have to fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. However, you or you and the family that you have, going to church as a unit is refreshing. You ever felt that? It's refreshing to be able to get up and go to church and, and give God all honor and glory. Why is it refreshing? God is the refresher. You can't have a refreshing feeling without the refreshing spirit. 
God is the refresher. He is the one who gives you peace. He is the one who refreshes your mind. He is the one who refreshes your soul. Isn't it priceless to hang out with your eternal family? Isn't it priceless to come and fellowship and say every praise is to our God and give God all honor and feel the Holy Spirit moving in the in the midst of the, the room and hear the praise and worship team singing and hear the keyboard and everything else? Go. Isn't it refreshing? How many people know that that's refreshing? It's refreshing to feel that, to hear that. Why? Because the world has its own refreshing and that refreshing takes you down. It's priceless to see and hang out with our eternal family and see how their temporary life is going. This is temporary for us. We're here for a short amount of time. So I want to know how my, my brothers and sisters' lives are going. I want to be able to talk to my sister Sandy or talk to my brother Tommy or just talk to my family. I want it, to, it's important to me what's going on in your lives. Why? Because this is temporary. We're eternal brothers and sisters. It matters to me what happens to you. And it matters to you what happens to me, right? That's what we do. It's priceless for us to hang out together. It's priceless for us to talk about our eternal father. It's priceless to talk about how great God is and what he's done for you today in this temporary life. It's priceless. And in business, they call that the party after the party. We get the party in, in salvation. We know that we know that we know that we believe in Jesus Christ. That makes you what? Saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Spirit, made right in the, in the eyes of the Lord God. It doesn't matter what your friends or family or coworkers say about you. You have been saved and you walk in the favor of the Lord God Almighty. I love knowing what to pray for your life. It's important for me to talk with you and see how you're doing. Why? Because secretly I write that down. I know I've got to pray for that for you. I love worshiping our Lord together as one group. How many people love that? How many people love clapping your hands to the Lord God Almighty? Amen. Look, it's real simple. I mean, you, you don't have to open your Bible or ever learn the word of God. You don't have to do it ever again. You can just believe and that will be enough. But your salvation walk is the problem. You want it to be right on earth. Learning the word of God is what? Rejuvenating. Why? Because God is the rejuvenator. You can, you can go to a spa and, and put some things on your eyes and sit back on, and get a tan or something like that. But that... That's temporary. I want eternal rejuvenating. That eternal rejuvenating only comes from God. That satisfaction only comes from God. That forgiveness only comes from God. That restoration only comes from God. You can't get it at a spa. You can't get it at Walmart or anywhere else. You can only get it from the Lord God Almighty. And how do you get that? You come here and get it. He has a bundle of it waiting for all of you. Learning the word of God is where you get the rejuvenating feeling from the rejuvenator. Opening your Bible gives you a true perspective on your life. God knows the true perspective of your life. Reading the Bible allows the Lord an opportunity to answer questions that you may have asked. Why? Because he knows all the answers. It, it's awesome to be able to get in front and talk with the person who has answers to every single question you ask. Reading God's word gives you what? A B12 shot. For what? For the new week. God is your energy. How many people say, man, I don't know. I, I'm not feeling right. I, he's your B12 shot. He's every vitamin that you've taken. 
he's your strength. He's your security blanket. He's the rock that is higher than me. He is the, 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 the strength, the, the foundation of your life. Reading God's word gives you that. And so the question, if you follow God's words, if you follow God's ways, if you follow what he says and not the ways that you think in your non-futuristic thinking, the ways you think are not even close to the ways God thinks. If you think that, what happens? You get rest. No fluff. Even in the midst of the battle, you get peace. Anybody ever been in the midst of the battle and felt like, you know, that, 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 that the matrix where you're like, <laughs> you felt like, man, it's all these things coming at me, but I'm blocking them off faster. I'm giving all honor and glory to God. I'm not even looking at what they're doing. I'm thinking about the Holy Spirit and all the Holy Spirit has done for me. I give all honor and glory to the praise and worship. And I, I thank God for lifting me up. I thank him for waking me up. I'm not worried about the storms that are coming at me. I'm giving all praise and glory to the one who is righteous, the one who is deserving of my praise, deserving of my honor, my glory, and all that I have to see. That's what it's about. If you follow God's ways and not what you think, you get rest. He is the peace. He is the rest. Let's read where Jesus speaks to all of those who are burdened by the confines of religion. Things you may, things you feel you have to do to please God. Wow, let's, let's, let's read this. Let's read what religion does. Religion does this. Religion, religion allows you to, to go in the wrong direction. Religion allows you to think about things that are not of God. But let's, let's, let's see what Jesus says about this whole thing. I mean, anybody say Wusa? Everybody say Wusa. Let's see what Jesus says. Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy. And my burden is what? Light. What does that mean, family? It means it's, when you take religion out of the equation and you just trust God, yeah, and get rid of all of those religious ways. Last week we read, last week we read that the disciples were eating while everyone else was what? Fasting. And now they are picking grain on the Sabbath <laughs> while others are doing what? Resting. Now, now, not to buck the Pharisees, but he was doing what? To exalt God. What does that mean? It, God is not religious. He's not interested in us being, you know, a statues just coming to church and doing this and doing that and, and turning left and turning right. He's interested in your praise. He's interested in your love for him. Jesus showed us this. He loves you. How many people understand that God loves you? He adores you. You are truly who he wanted you to be. Stop worrying about what your friends or your family think about you. The Lord God Almighty says you are righteous because he is righteous. He wants what's best for you. Following his laws blesses you, not him. He's already blessed. Resting is for you. Peace is for you. Gentleness is for you. Self-control is for you. Why? Because he is all that you want to be. And so if you are weary, might I suggest that you give him your all. Stop playing with God. Not because he needs you, but because you need him. We praise God because he's God. He's not the, the one that we play with. He is the God that we worship, the eternal God that created all things that knows what you need when you need him. Stop playing with him. 
When you play with him, you get the results of playing with him. You think, God, I'll just go to church every once in a while and I'll act like I love you and it's not. Well, then you get that in return. He loves you enough to let you live in your conditions. Let's change that today. Can we change that today, family? Can we decide to give God our all in everything that we have? Because it doesn't benefit him. He has everything. It benefits you. You are able to walk in peace if you serve the Prince of Peace. Let's do that today. Let's decide to let it all go. Let it all hang out and give all honor and glory to the Lord God Almighty. Can we do that, family? Who's with me? Stand if you're with me. Stand and show yourselves approved before the Lord God Almighty. He's looking at you. Stand and let him know that you today are, are giving him your all. You today will worship him. You today will rest with him. You today want peace from him. You today will remember the Sabbath day, not because it glorifies him, but because it allows you to get rest. Amen. Let the record show that everybody decided to stand. Let's pray today. Let's renounce our past life. That's what we do constantly each and every day. You can't get closer to God, but by renouncing your past life, not making it a religious life, but learning day by day. Every time you come, you're ready to learn. You're ready to apply. You're ready to take the word of God and put it on your life. God, what do you want me to do today? You want me to rest. Why? Because you rested. Not because you needed rest, but because I needed rest. Let's renounce our past life daily. Let's give it to God. Let's allow Jesus to make us over. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am flawed. <laughs> I am sick. I make mistakes. I need rest. I need peace. I need tranquility. I need love. And I can only get it from you. You are the bank that I need. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Make me over to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, let's say it all together. Amen. Woo! Give God all honor and glory in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father.